Ethiopia. The name derives from the Greek Ethio meaning burnt and Pia meaning face. The land of burnt faced peoples. That's why Aeschylus described it as a land far off, a nation of black men. But one can't believe one's own eyes looking at the beauty of this land of wonders. The high mountains and the green hills. The deep valleys and the sight capturing plains. The rivers filled with peas and the lakes so wide, the vivid colored flowers and the juicy fruits, the animals so rare and the birds in myriads, made in perfect symmetry would make one spellbound. Ethiopia's lakes are known for the sheer numbers of birds they harbor. It boasts of 857 bird species. It's also not surprising then that Ethiopian wildlife is so different and undocumented. Like the mountain Nyala and the giant Molaret is found only in Ethiopia. In the high lands is Lake Tana, the source of Blue Nile. In Ethiopian language, it is called Abai River. This river is so sacred to Ethiopians as some of them have long identified the Blue Nile as the river Gion mentioned as flowing out of the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. Ethiopia is the 10th largest country in Africa and is the major constituent of the land mass known as the Horn of Africa. It contains 61 million of population with over 80 different ethnic groups speaking 83 languages with 200 dialects. This can be broken into four main groups Semitic, Cushitic, Omotic and Nilo-Saharan. The people of Ethiopia owe an inborn sense of survival to their earliest ancestors who walked this land millions of years before them. It is the birthplace of Lucy or Dinganish, meaning Thou art wonderful, the world's earliest known hominid, lived more than three million years ago and her bones still lie at rest in the Ethiopian National Museum. Palmer depicted Ethiopians as pious and favored by gods. Yes, in fact, for everything, they give praises to God, saying, Exyabir Imazgan. According to the traditional sources, paganism as well as Judaism were practiced 
side by side here. The Judaism is said to be brought by King Menelik, the son of Queen Sheba, whom she had born for King Solomon. The legend says that Menelik grew up and visited his father in Jerusalem and brought the Ark of the Covenant by subterfuge, accompanied by some Israelites. And the Ark of the Covenant is said to be in the church of Otsu, the place of Queen Sheba, even today. According to the history, Christianity was brought to Ethiopia by nine saints who came from Constantinople and Syria in 480. They contributed greatly to the development of the Giz liturgy, literature and translated the Bible into Giz. Thus, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church was born. It has its own head, follows its own customs, and is extremely proud of its 4th century origins, which means Ethiopia was Christian long before Europe. The Orthodox Christianity and Islam are the two main religion in Ethiopia. There is a strong Judaic elements in Ethiopian Orthodox Church, especially food restrictions, the way animals are killed, almsgiving and keeping up of the laws. The Ethiopian Orthodox monks live an austere life on the top of the hills in the caves. Among all the feasts that are celebrated here, the important one is the Meskel, celebrated in memory of the finding of the true cross by the Empress Eleni. On this day, the people gather together and prepare a tar of wood on which the cross is being placed and burnt as a symbol of the triumph of the cross. This is known as the mescal flower because it blooms during the feast of the mescal throughout Ethiopia. The second important feast is Timkat, the Feast of Epiphany. On this day, the replicas of the Ark of the Covenant are removed from the Holy of Holies. From each churches are being carried by the priest and paraded by the Christians to the nearby rivers or ponds in procession and the water is blessed for baptism. Ethiopia has a rich tradition of both secular and religious music, singing and dancing, which together constitute an important part of Ethiopian cultural life. There can be no celebrations without singing and dancing. The church's liturgy is so active and lively due to music, dancing, clapping of hands and singing by both young and old. Ethiopia is a predominantly agricultural economy 
NKG, more than 80% of the population on less than 20% of the land currently under cultivation. Teff is the mainly cultivated grain. This grain, grounded, fermented, is used to make a spongy bread called injera, the staple food of every meal which is eaten with vegetables, millets and meat on festival days. Maize also one of the staple food in some part of Ethiopia, especially of the poor. Meat is cultivated as well to prepare the local bread called dabo. Seth, commonly called false banana and kocho locally, the bulb of which is dug up, shredded and then reburied, wrapped in leaves in holes. It ferments into thick cheesy paste, later used to bake unleavened bread. Coffee, one of the world's most popular beverages, originated in Ethiopia in a place called Jimma. Besides all this, varieties of vegetables, fruits, millets and spices are being cultivated in Ethiopia. The rural lowland population is composed of many nomadic and semi-nomadic peoples. The nomadic peoples seasonally graze livestock while the semi-nomadic peoples are subsistence farmers. Variation in altitude results in dramatic climatic variation. Though there are bulk of rain in the major rainy season, the land is prone to drought and other than the rainy seasons, the land is very dry. Be very rich in hospitality and reverence for the other and also following the Jewish culture, before every meal the hands are being washed and the entire family eats from one tray as a symbol of unity and love. A typical Ethiopian meal is always followed by an elaborate and charming coffee ceremony. And raw meat is considered to be a delicious food. The traditional houses are round dwellings with cylindrical walls made of wattle and dao. The roofs are conical and made of thatch and built artistically. The center pole has sacred significance in most ethnic groups. Ethiopia's cultural attribute is its diversity and complexity. Its cultural heritage is based on a kaleidoscope of arts and crafts 
developed by various ethnic groups. No other country in the world has such an incredible range or intricacy of cross designs. Modern Ethiopian arts deep foundations stem from 1700 years of experience accumulated in the creation of the church morals and manuscript illustrations. The largest customers for Ethiopia's arts and crafts are Ethiopians themselves because most objects are functional and put to daily use. Ethiopian women have a distinctive hairstyle that makes them prettier. Men do the most physically taxing activities outside the home while women are in charge of domestic sphere. Young children are involved in household labor at an early age. Girls usually have a greater amount of work to do than boys. Markets serves as a place for regular social gatherings as well as the exchange of produce. Begging is endemic and an accepted way of life, wherein the old and the blind ask for help in the name of God by the roadsides and are accepted both by the Muslims and the orthodox way of life. The cities are getting into skyscraper age while the rural people continue to live in their huts. There is always the contrast between the city and the rural area like any other places in their lifestyle, roads, houses, transportation, etc. Incarnated to this culture and tradition, the Sisters of Charity of Saints Bartholomew Capitano and Vincenza Gerosa have started our missionary journey from November 2007. Flames will not come. 
consume you I will be ever beside you to deliver you Fear not I have redeemed you Deep waters will not overwhelm you Burning flames will not consume you Beside you to deliver you. You are precious to me. You are precious to me. You are dear to my heart. I will love you forever. forsake you feel not I have redeemed you redeemed you feel not I have redeemed you deep waters will not overwhelm you flames will not consume you I will be ever beside you to deliver you You are precious to me You are precious to me You anymore Something new I'm doing for you In the wilderness I will make a way In the desert rivers will flow Will flow Will flow You are precious to me You are precious to me If you see the wonder of a fairy tale, you can take the future even if you fail. I believe in angels, something good.
Through the intercession of our saints Bartolomeo Capitano and Vincenzo Gerosa, through the powerful patronage of Holy Infant Mary, we continue our missionary journey following the footprints of Jesus our Redeemer.